and they are living in a place called Bethlehem, Judah. Are you with me here? We know that Judah means praise and that Bethlehem means house of bread. I think this new generation is trying to reverse the words and they want more praise than bread. Y'all want more of the chants than the word of God. Y'all want more of the dancing than the word of God. Now don't get me wrong, I love to praise him. I love to praise his holy name. But at the end of the day, when I'm going through something, amen, a praise only ain't going to do it. I thought I was going to some more responses in it, amen. You do see do and your partner ain't going to do it. Amen, I know all the praise folks ain't saying nothing because that's all they have is a praise. But when you're going through something, you're going to need a word from the Lord. Amen. You're going to need a stern word or a strong word to carry you where you need to go. You're going to have to come through, amen, through the bread that you eat. Amen. And the bread which represents the word of God. Amen. If you belong to, amen, uh, this church. I said this church. Did you hear what I said? If you belong to this church, you need to thank God every single time you get a chance. That, amen. And you come to the temple that you hear a good word. I mean, you need to thank God every chance you get a chance that you hear a word that can change your life. Not just a scooby snack, but a word amen, that will stick to you. Not everybody to love the word in here. Just throw something on your road because somebody is distracted and say, I love the word. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Bible says something in the who? The Bible says something that we cannot overlook. In the book of Ruth, the Bible said that there was a famine that came to Bethlehem, Judah. And the people were leaving Bethlehem, Judah because of the famine. Trust me, stay with me. I know I how to drive. Amen. I'm trying to figure out something, Pastor Jeff, because if Bethlehem Judah, which means the house of bread, and if a famine, which means a lack of bread, I'm trying to figure out how does the house of bread run out of bread? How do you run out of the word of God when the word of God is the house that should have bread? The reason why this is even happening today is because churches want to give you sweets and no bread. They want to give you a happy meal. Uh -huh. They want to give you three points and shout you when every message doesn't need a dance. I got no help in here. Every message doesn't need a praise. I got no help. But there should be some message that will convict you to change it. Some message that will convict you to run to the altar. You shouldn't have to wait for an altar call to run to the altar. But the bread found me. And the word of God found me. He said, I sent my wife and it healed them. Maybe that's why we got afflictions in the house of God running rampant because everybody don't want to eat this bread. I don't care if it's whole wheat. I don't know if it can happen here. I don't care if it's a crumb. Amen. If it's a crumb, the same ingredients as in the crumb is in the bread. You just need to get what you need to get. Can I get anybody that said, I need bread? I need bread. Amen. People of God, we got to cook, eating sweets. But in this next move of God, people are looking for a church that's going to give me the unadulterated gospel, the word, the bread. And I know that, amen, there's some other stuff that's in the house of God. Y'all ain't going to say nothing, let's be honest. There are some other things that are in the house of God, but as long as I get my bread, I'm all right. <laughs> Y'all can keep all the other stuff to yourself. I don't want to be in that. I don't want to know that. I don't want to see that. I don't want to know your business. I just need bread. Because at the end of the day, amen, if I keep knowing your stuff, I'm not going to eat bread, amen. I'm going to eat garbage. I ain't got no help in here. And the reason why some of you are jacked up today, because, amen, you have been nothing but a waste basket of garbage. You came to church today with a bunch of garbage in your spirit. Came today with somebody that told you all week and two weeks ago. And now you're looking at folks cross-eyed and crooked out it. I already picked it up, but I want you to understand, see, when I come to the house of God, I don't look at people, I look at souls. And I want you to understand that because if I look at people, I will see the affliction, I will see your issue, I will see your struggle, but I also see that there's somebody that want to be saved. And anybody that is in this house 
Bible says that that Naomi and her husband leave. Then for him, you got to quit thinking, baby, because you just said, is he talking about me? Yes, I'm talking about you. Amen. 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 Judah. Amen. Her coat. Come on. Bethlehem, Judah, and they go to a pagan city. I told you I got the Holy Ghost for real. Um, they go to a pagan city called uh, Moab. And when they uh, get there, something happens with their people. The family, because don't pray, okay? Don't block a while I preach. Amen. Uh, they get there, in the family, because Naomi has two sons. And when they get to a uh, Moab, they meet two women, uh, one by the name of Ruth and one by the name of Orpah. And, and they are sisters. And, and uh, they, they marry Naomi's sons. They find them a husband. Y'all ain't saying nothing, stay with me. But later on in the scripture or the holy word, uh, the Bible declares that uh, Naomi's husband dies. Yeah. Oh, what a tragedy. Amen. Not only after that Naomi's husband dies, but her two sons died. So there is nobody, y'all, that is going to be able to carry on the last name. Can I get any help in here? So now they are have to deal with the death. Women mm -hmm, have to deal with the death. Women, the helpmate, have to deal with the death with no strength or any strength, any arms in their house. And Naomi has a conversation uh, with her two daughter-in-laws. And, and she says, my husband is dead and my two sons are dead. But I don't have anything else to give y'all. Uh, Naomi says to them, this is why you know uh, you stay here in Moab, your hometown, because uh, by natural your father is the president. He's a president here. Amen. He's the president of this nation. Stay here in your hometown and I'm going to go back to my hometown because I hear that in Bethlehem, Judah, the famine is over. So I'm going to go back, but Ruth says, ah, that ain't happening. I'm stuck to you now, and I'm not going to let you go. Where you go, I'm going. She says, where you lodge, I'm lodging. If you lodge at the Ritz Carlton, guess what? I'm going to the Ritz Carlton. If you go to the Hotel Six, I'm going to the Hotel Six. If you go to Big Mama in the house and sleep on the couch, I'm on the floor. Why y'all ain't saying nothing? Where you lodge, I'm going to lodge. You got to stop, people of God, and I don't know how this is going to grab you. You got to stop being connected to people who are only loyal out of convenience. When everybody talking about me, y'all ain't saying I'm out with it. Don't be around me when I get the victory. Because one thing for sure and two things for certain, I shall have the victory. You better have somebody around you and say, nigga, I shall get the victory. 
the victory. Oh, y'all saying it like y'all scared about it. Say, I don't care what they said, I shall have the victory. And they only says, I don't have anything else to give y'all. Y'all stay here. In other words, she was saying, you would rather, you would be better off here. Your life would be better here. Your familiar here. Amen. Your hometown is here. Your family is here. But Ruth still says, I'm going with you. And what I've learned is that you cannot calculate loyalty uh, with people. Amen. That brings stuff to the table. Or uh, brings stuff just to the table. But you have to calculate loyalty with people that up at the table. What do you mean by that, Pastor Jenkins? See, sometimes people will bring a bone, but they'll carry a bone. Sometimes folks will bring stuff to the table, and when they get, have you ever saw folks, amen, to bring stuff to your house at a dinner? And when they don't eat it all, they take it back home. Y'all ain't saying nothing. They don't leave it there. Uh -uh, no, 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 no. You don't bought a 12 packs of Pepsi, amen, and we only got about six left, but you gonna go grab them and take them back home. Why don't you just leave them there? That's what you bought them for, to leave but see, you're going to watch folks because that's disloyal. You got folks that are coming to your table, but they're still taking stuff back home. That's why you got to be careful when you share stuff with people. Because when you share stuff with people, you forgot other folks got friends. And other people got friends. And they got friends. And before you know it, all your business is out. Can I give you the help in here? It's because somebody brought something to the table, but they didn't leave it there. And it's in this hour, amen, I need to find out Maybe if I tell you something I hear it again, then I know I can't trust you. Because I only said it to you. And so if it get back to me, I know only one person I told. You got to watch folks. Because in this hour, people are trying to sabotage you to make sure that you don't grow when you need to grow. But I come to tell you, people of God, it's time to grow. If I got to walk alone, grow by yourself. If I got to be by myself, grow by yourself. If I got to be by myself, Moab and she married with 
someone in the Philistine giant family. Okay, also when I read it, I found out that she had a son by the name of Barzell Lisa L. Barzelliel, excuse me, and then he has a son by the name of Ishbi, who has a son by the name of Goliath. Oh, excuse me, in other words, we understand now, my brothers and 
sisters that David is Jesus, his great, 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 great grandfather. And so now we look what Jesus does when Jesus comes on the scene. I'm now in Matthew, the 47th chapter. He comes on the scene and Jesus comes to die. And even in his birth was prophetic because he had wrapped uh, uh, when he was born in a manger. <laughs> he was wrapped in swaddling clothing. <laughs> when you look about what swaddling clothing was, <laughs> that means he looked like a mummy. <laughs> that means he looked like death even in his birth. <laughs> really he looked like what he came to do. <laughs> even in the in the in 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 in, in, in the barn. <laughs> and when they lying in the manger <laughs> He was wrapped up so that you could get unwrapped up. Can I get any help in here? So Jesus is saying to y'all, don't understand. When we look at this, y'all are not going to kill me. But the Bible says that Jesus told him, I'm going to lay down my own life. I'm telling y'all to prove my text. And now he said, you can't take away my life. He said, but I lay it down. But when you kill me, I'm telling you one thing that you cannot do. You cannot kill me in Jerusalem. You got to take me to the outskirts of Jerusalem. And you got to put me on a hill called Golgotha. The place of a skull. Whose skull? The lion's is Bleed on it, it will be saved. Well, I came to tell y'all, in case you didn't understand, when we go back to the text in the 33rd verse, it says, When they were come to a place called Bergata, that is to save the place of the skull, that's the place where the lion's head was. Calvary is the same place where the skull of 
blood still have power. Start a rumor on your own. And tell them the blood still had power.